This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Patient consent was obtained for the following video. Prone positioning improves oxygenation and decreases mortality in patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. This video demonstrates how to place an intubated patient in the prone position with particular emphasis on risks in patients with a body mass index or BMI greater than 30 and in whom the prone position is necessary for a prolonged period of time. Prone positioning is indicated in intubated patients with severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, who have hypoxemia that is refractory to treatment. Contraindications to prone positioning include the presence of spinal instability, unstable fractures, an open chest or an unstable chest wall, an open abdomen, elevated intracranial pressure, acute bleeding, and severe hemodynamic instability. There are risks associated with the prone position in intubated patients with an elevated BMI. Risks to the airway and lungs include extubation, mainstem intubation, airway occlusion, lung derecruitment, tracheal injury, and aspiration. Hemodynamic risks include acute changes of preload, systemic and pulmonary resistance, and kinking or dislodgement of vascular access devices infusing vasoactive agents. Other risks include increased intraabdominal pressure and abdominal compartment syndrome, kinking or dislodgement of tubing, pressure injuries including facial injuries, and peripheral nerve injuries. The primary risk to healthcare workers is the potential for exposure to infection. However, correct and consistent implementation of infection control protocols effectively mitigate the potential risk. An additional risk to healthcare workers is the potential for physical injury. This underscores the importance of proper training and practice. To perform the procedure, you will need the following equipment, cushions or pads, flat sheets, electrocardiography or ECG stickers, lubrication and protection for the patient's eyes, a patient lift sling is optional, a bag valve mask, intubation supplies, and supplies for cardiopulmonary resuscitation must be readily available. All staff members performing the procedure should wear the following PPE when caring for patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 or confirmed exposures to severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or SARS-CoV-2 during the quarantine period or other respiratory pathogens for which similar transmission-based precautions are recommended. Gown, gloves, eye protection, and an N95 respirator or another respirator that has been approved by the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. For other patients, standard precautions apply, including transmission-based precautions when applicable. At least five healthcare personnel, including a clinician trained in airway management, are needed to safely place an intubated patient in the prone position. The role of each operator should be assigned in a briefing before the procedure. Planning should include a very quick return of the patient to the supine position if CPR or reintubation becomes necessary. Assess the patient for adequate sedation and hemodynamic stability. Consider administering a bolus of a paralytic drug. One measure to consider is to administer oxygen before the procedure at a flow rate that will result in a fraction of inspired oxygen or FiO2 of 1. Discontinue and disconnect enteral feeding tubes. Fully inflate the mattress. Confirm the endotracheal tube is secure and in an appropriate position as indicated by the most recent chest radiograph. Maintain ECG limb leads and lead V1 in addition to the pulse oximeter. Secure all tubes and catheters and disconnect any non-essential tubing. Position the urinary catheter so as to avoid potential injury. Apply foam for padding at pressure points. Close and disconnect the arterial line from the pressure bag.
The clinician managing the airway is positioned at the head of the bed to control the airway during the procedure. Two staff members are positioned on each lateral side of the bed with additional personnel if needed. Use the underlying flat sheet to pull the patient to the side of the bed furthest from the ventilator. Place a new flat sheet next to the patient on the side closest to the ventilator along the length of the bed. Turn the patient towards the ventilator until the patient is positioned on the side and then pause. The ECG leads may be moved to the posterior thorax if the patient's condition is stable. At the direction of the clinician managing the airway, continue to turn the patient over by pulling the tucked arm and new flat sheet away from the ventilator until the patient is in the prone position. Pull the flat sheet to center the patient on the bed. Verify that the endotracheal tube is positioned correctly. Confirm that the patient is ventilated by auscultation of breath sounds as well as confirmation of stable tidal volume and ventilating pressures on the ventilator. Use a manometer to verify the cuff pressure. Reconnect the arterial line and ensure adequate eye protection for the patient. Check all pressure points, making sure to relieve pressure on bony prominences. Reduce intra-abdominal pressure by adding upper chest and pelvic support. A swimmer's position, in which one arm is raised with the head rotated towards the raised arm and the other arm positioned alongside the body is recommended. This position should be alternated with patient repositioning every two to four hours. To return the patient from the prone position to the supine position, fully inflate the mattress and use the underlying flat sheet to pull the patient to the side of the bed furthest from the ventilator. Then, on the side closest to the ventilator, tuck the arm with the palm up under the pelvis. Place a new flat sheet next to the patient on the side closest to the ventilator along the length of the bed. Turn the patient towards the ventilator until the body is positioned on its side and then pause. The ECG leads may need to be moved to the anterior thorax. At the direction of the clinician managing the airway, continue to turn the patient over by pulling the tucked arm and new flat sheet through until the patient is in the supine position. Center the patient on the bed. Again, verify that the endotracheal tube is positioned correctly, including confirmation of breath sounds and checking the cuff pressure. Reconnect the arterial line and check all pressure points for injury or skin breakdown. The major complications associated with placing an intubated patient in the prone position include nerve compression, venous stasis, dislodgement of the endotracheal tube, vascular catheter, or drainage tube, pressure injuries, and vomiting. This video demonstrates how to safely place an intubated patient in the prone position and return the patient to the supine position. Key points to consider include multidisciplinary communication and collaboration, correct and consistent implementation of infection control protocols, an understanding of the risks associated with patients with elevated BMI, and an understanding of the risks with prolonged placement of a patient in the prone position.